Before we jump into today's video, I have to be completely honest with you. This wasn't the GPD device that I intended on reviewing today. A small translation issue ended up causing me to order the GPD Micro instead of the GPD Win 2. I knew that I was going to have this device with me for a few days until I got around to doing a reorder, so I decided to see if I could make a review on it with the time that I had. The unofficial ethos of this YouTube channel is to explore the world's handheld tech and present it to you, but as of right now, I've only focused on retro gaming devices. I'll state the obvious right here. The GPD Micro is in no way a retro gaming device. It's a device that can play retro games, but that's not its intended audience. This is a device that was designed for IT and business professionals. Whether or not they would be interested in a device like this is an entirely different question. There are a few videos about this device already on YouTube, but compared to its brothers, there's hardly anything in the way of useful information about this device for its stated audience. So today, I'm going to try to answer the question, is it possible to be productive on a micro PC? Whenever you're thinking about buying a device like this, it's important to have a use case in mind unless you don't mind blowing money on something that you'll never use. Now, I'm in no way an IT or business professional, but I do use computers for productivity tasks like video and photo editing, and I'm always trying to think of ways to carve out more time and space to do more work. Video editing is a time-consuming task, so I always try to edit whenever I can't do anything else. A perfect time for me to edit is while I'm traveling on public transit. A device as small as the GPD Micro means that I can travel much lighter and work more efficiently in the cramped spaces of Chinese transit. For the purposes of reviewing this device as a productivity machine, I'm going to try and create the entire video that you're watching on the device itself. With that out of the way, let's quickly go over the specs of this unit. The GPD Micro comes in with a 10 watt quad core Intel 4100 processor with 8GB of LP DDR4 RAM and an M.2 128GB SSD. This device is no slouch when it comes to ports. The Micro has a micro SDXC card slot on the left side of the device with a USB 3.0 port. On the back of the device, we have an RS-232 serial port, HDMI out, two USB 3.0 ports, a USB-C port, and an Ethernet jack. And finally, on the front of the device, we have our microphone hole and headphone jack. When we open the device, we can see a surprisingly decent backlit keyboard. Above that are our three mouse buttons, power switch, fan control, and trackpad. The display on this unit is probably the only downside in terms of specs. Covered with Gorilla Glass 4, the Micro PC has a 6-inch screen with a resolution of 1280 by 720 a pixel density of 245 and a viewing angle of 178 degrees. For wireless communication, we have Bluetooth 4.2 and 802.11abgnac Wi-Fi. Our total package comes in at a very light 440 grams, which is almost twice the weight of my cell phone, with the benefit of also being able to be pocketed. Now that we've covered specs, I want to talk about the price of this unit and where it falls in line with the other devices by GPD. The GPD currently has three devices that I think you can directly compare against the micro PC, depending on whether or not you are concerned about its usefulness as a productivity machine. Those three devices would be the GPD XD+, Plus, the GPD Win, and the GPD Win 2. If we plot these out on a line, we have the GPD XD Plus for around 230 on Amazon. A used GPD Win goes for around 300 or less on eBay, depending on the condition, and a GPD Win 2 goes for 730 for the 128 gigabyte model on Amazon. The GPD Micro comes in at 480 Amazon or 414 on AliExpress. I'm just going to quickly discount the GPD XD Plus, as I don't really think it can compete with the Micro PC, even if you're only considering gaming ability. The Micro PC is much more capable as an emulation system than the GPD XD in every way. That leaves us with just the Win and the Win 2. The GPD Win has a pass mark score of 1894 compared to the 2268 of the Micro PC, but the real difference comes from the GPUs of these devices. The Win has an Intel HD 405 GPU with a min and max clock of 400 to 600 megahertz compared to the Micro PC's 300 to 700 megahertz clock. The GPD Win 2, on the other hand, has a much better CPU and GPU than the Micro PC with a pass mark score of 3528 and a GPU clock speed of 300 to 900 megahertz. That added GPU speed opens up a lot more doors that are closed for the Micro PC, but are those extra doors worth the added $250? The goal of this video isn't to try to pitch this as a gaming device, but I do consider this a poor man's win too. That is, if you don't mind losing the dedicated gaming buttons. For this section of the review, I'm going to be testing N64, PlayStation 1, Dreamcast, Nintendo DS, PSP, GameCube, 
PS2, 3DS, Wii U, and some PC titles. Let's kick things off with some Super Mario 64, which runs without any issues on this device as you would expect from an N64 title on a device this powerful. We see the same level of performance from PS1 running Final Fantasy VII, as well as good performance from Dreamcast running Crazy Taxi. Jumping over to handhelds, we have no issues running Nintendo DS with Pokemon Diamond at 60fps, or PSP locked in at a consistent 30fps with Monster Hunter. I gave the 3DS a try, but that's probably a little out of the range of this device, with all of the games that I tried to play failing to break 20fps. Switching back over to main consoles, GameCube has some slight issues with some of the more popular titles, but this can be alleviated to some extent by using a fork of the Dolphin emulator. Running the Ishiruka build of Dolphin, I was able to get Mario Sunshine running without any issues at a respectable FPS. Wind Waker also runs very strongly on this, but Smash has some problems with some minor lag during matches, it's still very playable. PS2 was a little bit of a mixed bag based on my test. Some of the games that I tested required some serious work in the options in order to run smoothly, while some other games ran but had some graphical issues. I'm not an expert by any means in PS2 emulation, so I'm not sure if these issues can be fixed, but PS2 emulation on this device is definitely playable. Jumping forward from here, I decided to give Breath of the Wild a try, knowing that it probably wouldn't run at all, Using all of the tools and options that are available, I was able to get the game to run at 20 FPS in some areas, but the game doesn't look pretty and it's not playable by any stretch of the imagination. Moving on over to some PC titles, the Micro PC had no issues at all running Half-Life 2 and Sanctum at full speed, but Borderlands 1 required a lot of work under the hood to get this to a playable state. I needed to manually change a ton of settings in the game folder to turn off some of the graphic options to get this thing to run above 30 FPS, but it's definitely playable and it's one of my favorite PC titles. I also tried to get Monster Hunter World to run with minimum settings, but that was a no-go from the start. It did give me a reason to finally try Steam Remote Play. My desktop PC is more than capable of handling this function, and I was pleasantly surprised by how well the game looked being streamed over the device with minimal latency. So this is another great option if you want to play some more demanding titles from your Steam library. I've talked a lot about the gaming aspect of this device so far, but it's not fair to think of this device as only a gaming console, because it wasn't designed to be one, even though, as I've already shown, it can game very well. Picking this thing up, for gaming alone wouldn't make any sense given that you can already play almost everything that I've shown in this video on your phone. So that's why I decided to try to include PC titles in my gaming test. To test productivity, I tried to make this video entirely using a combination of OBS and Adobe Premiere Pro. I filled up my internal storage pretty quickly with the heavier game titles that I downloaded, so the USB 3.0 ports were a godsend for connecting an external HD to hold and edit the extra footage that you are watching. The multiple ports also allowed me to access USB drives to be able to transfer files over from my main PC. The HDMI out port helped me the most at bringing this device to a usable state for some of the more fine detail edits, as the 720p screen is a little below the minimum requirements for using Premiere Pro. That's the main reason why I stated that this was a downside for this device. The fan switch was probably the most useful thing in this device, which I wasn't expecting at all. The room that I record in isn't soundproof, and the laptop that I use to typically record that I'm connecting to my audio interface can ramp up pretty quickly with the fan speeds. But this was really nice to be able to flip the switch on the GPD when I needed to record as silently as possible. I'll admit, it does look a little silly when this thing is completely hooked up with all of the ports, but it helps make this a functional device. I shot all of the footage that you watched in this video in 4K and edited that footage with proxies in Premiere Pro. All of the games that could run well with OBS were recorded at the screen 720 resolution and then upscaled in post. I really didn't expect that this thing would be able to handle editing my content at all, so I was pleasantly surprised to find out that this could in fact be used for video production. It may not be the most practical thing, but if I'm ever stuck on a crowded train, you can probably find me editing some footage. Going back to my earlier question, is it possible to be productive on a micro PC? Yes. And when you're looking to be unproductive, it's great for that too. 
My name is Taki, and I've been your host on this review. If you like what you saw here and you want to help support future reviews of interesting tech, consider dropping a like and subscribing to the channel. I'll catch you back here next time with a real retro handheld. Now get out and go enjoy the rest of your day. Taki out.